Welcome to the show. We got the fantasy deadline ending, the NFL trades, 18-game winning streak by the Heat, and March Madness coming up. We'll be right back with Sports Talk Live. Welcome to Sports Socks Live. I'm Grant Cotero, and we'll first start you off with the Bulls and Lakers game. I got Cody Holloway and Skylar Holloway over here helping me out to talk sports. So let's get to it, guys. First off, Bulls and Lakers. What do you guys think? All right, we got the Bulls and the Lakers. Uh, Nate Robinson had 19 points, and I feel like he had to step up because uh, Derrick Rose is coming back sometime whenever he feels like he's healthy enough, yeah. according to him when he can dunk on his own time. And I feel like Nate Robinson had to step up because he know he's not going to get that much clock anymore. Yeah, dude, but what about the Bulls, man? If they slip without Derrick Rose, they could get, fall to an eight seed and maybe play the Miami Heat in the first yeah, round. Yeah, and they don't want the Heat no, or the Pacers. Or the Knicks. Or the Knicks. So D. Rose has to come back and be healthy and start playing because Nate Robinson isn't an MVP, and I don't think he can get the job done. I agree, but I'm going to have to say, because D. Rose's hamstrings are sore, I think that he's going to sit out the season and pick up where he left off last year in the playoffs and join his Bulls then. All right, guys, so now we're going to talk a little bit, bit about the Heat and Pacers, but we'll start off with that 18-game winning streak by the Heat. What do you think about that? Uh, uh, LeBron said that it wasn't a rivalry because they asked him that, and he said it's not a rivalry, so they came out. <laughs> And they tried to destroy the Pacers, which they ended up doing for 18 straight, even though LeBron had only 13 points. But when you have a team like the Heat, you really don't need to score because you got Chalmers, Ray Allen, and a lot of other people. Shane Bettier. Yeah. Shane Bettier. Well, like he said, LeBron doesn't ever call it a rival rivalry, any game a rivalry, except maybe the Spurs, like you were yeah, saying. the Spurs. But I feel like that they could get knocked off soon by the Milwaukee Bucks when they play them this weekend. The Bucks have played them close recently they beat him once this year took him to overtime in Miami so I feel like that could be the game where they slip up last year the Bucks did take two or three against the Heat so that's correct yeah it's uh, some important stuff and it's kind of crazy to see LeBron only scoring 13 points but you could definitely tell that he was controlling the floor out there and playing like a champion again so it's good to see him still out there controlling the team and having Chalmers there to help him out. Yeah, yeah, but Chalmers did have 26 points, and that's kind of weird for Chalmers because the big three usually score all the points. Yeah. But don't cut out the Pacers. I feel like they're going to be a team to be reckoned with here in the near future. They got Paul George, Danny Granger, Roy Hibbert, who are all all-stars, and I feel like yeah. they can make a pretty deep run in the Eastern Conference this year. So. Don't come count them out. I feel like it's going to be between them and the Heat to make the NBA Finals in the Eastern Conference. I would definitely agree. The Pacers are a dangerous team, and I think their mistake this time was they were planning to guard the big three players, but it ended up being just the rest of the Miami Heat team. So they just had to do a little different game plan, and I think they'll get them next time because this season they're 2-1 and one against the Heat. But, I mean, how do you guard the Heat? Because you, you have don't. the starting five, then you got the bench five, who can also go off and play alone if they wanted to. That's very true. You they got, got Ray Allen and Battier. The deep bench yeah, with Rashad three Lewis, shooters. No for scoring 50 a couple times when well, he played on the, the Super Sonics. Yep, yeah. but Miami is last or 30th place for rebounds so that's not that's such a good number come into play i mean they got yeah. roy hibbert he's huge he can knock or he can get rebounds like no other so I and mean, david west i'm not really that big of a fan of chris bosh either i think he's yeah. overrated i think he shoots way too much he's pretty weird that's <laughs> he's not sports related but chris <laughs> bosh is pretty weird kind of looks like a dinosaur Oh, it's but. got the avatar appeal, but it's all right. <laughs> Moving on to the Bucks and Kings. Let's start with the Bucks. How are you guys thinking that? I mean, this game really had no fan appeal. 
three bucks who were injured. I mean, Ilya Sova was out. Larry Sand. I'm a Larry Sanders fan because he played hard. JJ and, was out. And JJ Redick was out. So I didn't think it would get this high scoring, but it did get into like a hundred. Yeah, the hundreds. Two yeah. point game, one fifteen yeah. to one thirteen. What about uh, Demarcus Cousins getting ejected for getting in a fight with Mike Dunleavy? I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, Cousins is probably their best player. I can't, you can't really argue with say Jimmer Fredette is or someone uh, like that. So yeah. I feel like that was a pretty big turning point in the game, and the Bucks squeaked it out by two. Did you feel it was cool for Mike Dunleavy or Demarcus Cousins? Oh, I thought, I thought definitely Dunleavy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought that since Marcus Cousins got ejected, that really saved the Bucks because he was killing it in the paint. He had 26 points before he got ejected, and then he got ejected in the third, and the Bucks took home the W. So I yeah. feel like if he stopped getting ejected, he could be probably the best big man in the league. Because Dwight Howard, I was a fan of, but after this season, and there's no buying him either. Yeah, yeah it was Demarcus so Cousins. Fourth time getting ejected from yeah. a game this year, so can we give some uh, props to Brandon Jennings too, who has averaged at least 15 assists in the past four games. I think he had nine that game, but the games before he had 19, 17, and I believe 12. So I mean, he's getting a lot of assists, dishing out to Monte Ellis a lot, who I think had 29 points in the game. Yep, Monte had 29, 29, 29 so, and nine assists, correct. I mean, that's a deadly backcourt right there. Yeah, I like the I like the way the Bucks are looking. They're a strong team, but could use a little work. Wish we would have got Josh Smith. Yeah. Moving on to OKC and the Spurs. Last night, the game was pretty good, but the Spurs ended up taking it home. Can you guys give me your opinion on that game? Uh, this game was supposed to be like a statement for the Thunder because they were supposed to take over the top seed, but they ended up losing to the shorthanded Spurs, who didn't have a point guard. And I just felt that the Thunder was supposed to dominate, but whenever you got Wessel Westbrook on the court, who shoots up, what you say, 27, 27 times? 27 times. And you got Kevin Durant, who shot like 15. That's not right. Yeah. They I mean, trade to Westbrook. Don't ever count out the San Antonio Spurs either. I feel like they're in every single game, especially at home. I think they're 28 and 4 at home this year. Yeah. I think so. Only Denver got a better home record. Denver's yeah. 28 and 3, so yeah. don't ever count out the Spurs. I mean, they don't even have anyone. They have Tim Duncan, who's about 50 years old. Bunch Parker, of old dudes. Parker's on the bench. I mean, they got Gary Neal, if you ever heard of him, Kawhi Leonard, Tiago Splitter. Splitter, who had a great game. I think it was 9 of 11 from the field. So, I mean, they have a bunch of no names, but they have a great coach in Greg Popovich and always feel like they get the job done. So, yeah, Tiago Splitter, I was thinking I might pick him up on my fantasy basketball team coming up here soon if he keeps getting all those rebounds. Yeah, he had 21 uh, to 10. So yeah, double double points. right there. And I would like to talk a little bit about OKC. Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook combined for 51 points against the Spurs. So the Spurs really couldn't stop them. But when it came down to the team, the team only scored 42 points, averaging about or making it 93 total points for the team. So really, I just think the OKC team needs to pick it up and not let their stars do all the work. Well, I feel like they could pick it up if Westbrook didn't shoot 27 yeah. times. I mean, he's no. got to dish the ball once in a while. Durant only had 16 shot attempts. I, yeah, you I can't have that. Yeah, you're trying to win a championship. You, that's not right. You can't yeah. go five for 27 from the field or whatever he was and expect to win the game. I mean, they had the lead in the first quarter, but he started jacking up threes and taking wild shots, and especially against the Spurs, who have a great defense. So... I blame this loss on Russell Westbrook. I no. feel like they should have kept uh, James Harden, made him point guard, made Westbrook shooting guard, so he could actually shoot 27 times if you right. feel like. Yeah, if they, had, if they had Harden, I feel like they'd definitely be the favorite to win it all, even though the Heat did beat him last year. I feel like yeah. it'd be a great rivalry, like I guess the Jazz and the Bulls were back in the 90s, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I so. could definitely agree. Uh, we got the Heat playing tonight along with seven other teams, so we'll uh, try to keep you updated on that later tonight. But other than that, it looks like we have a lot of NBA season left. Actually, we don't. Sorry, my mistake. We Ooh, don't have a lot. Like 20 games. Yeah, yeah, about 18 games, I believe, in the NBA season. But now we're going to head over to Perfect Pets Commercial. Thank you very much.